What were the witch trials? Why were so many witches killed? And what will get you accused of witchcraft? Hello listeners, in today's podcast we will be discussing the witch trials. In the 15th to 17th century, thousands of so-called witches were persecuted because of a number of economic, political, and social factors. The greatest of these factors was probably ignorance and fear. Even the smartest of the time were scientifically ignorant by today's standards, so it was only logical for them to blame things that they did not understand, such as natural disasters, on evil powers like satanic magic and the devil. It is because of this ignorance that led to the religious zealotry of the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries that was a driving factor of the witch craze. The document, Accusation of Witchcraft, is a primary source written in Lanchester on the 15th of June, 1634 by John Lord, the Bishop of Chester. This source documents the account of three women and their answers to a series of questions during an examination on their links to witchcraft. John Lord, the author of this document, was a senior church member in the city of Chester. It was often the duty of senior church members, such as the Bishop of Chester, to carry out examinations of people accused of witchcraft. This source provides a description of the confessions of a woman making deals with the devil and becoming a witch, as well as the untimely deaths of many neighbours of these women. From this document, we can infer many of the beliefs of the time, such as witches made deals with the devil, worshipped Satan, and they were believed to use magic to harm others. From this document, we can also assume that Women were primarily targeted as witches. Witches were believed to have marks on their body, possibly things like birthmarks or scars. And many people likely confessed to being a witch to avoid an even worse punishment, possibly torture. This source gives an accurate and reliable account of the witch trials, as it was transcribed by a bishop upon command of the Privy Council. The bishop would have been educated and had the authority to make such a document, likely to be presented as evidence to a court. This source is useful, as it provides valuable information about what people believed witches did, why you could be accused of witchcraft, and how witch trials functioned. After examining this source, it can be seen that due to the little scientific knowledge of the 15th to 17th centuries, and the resulting fear many felt of this great unknown, many turned to religion or superstition to answer these questions. To them, it was only logical that Satan caused famine, disease, or even birthmarks. And it was these beliefs that seem so strange to us today, that could have caused and continued the witch trials. Despite this evidence, however, there are sources that argue otherwise. In my opinion, the most interesting of these arguments is that the witch hysteria was actually perpetuated by greed. When the witch hunts were at their peak in the late 1600s, many people in office and in positions of power promoted the persecution of witches in order to become wealthy. The article, The Scope of Persecution, is a secondary source, written by George Lincoln Burr. It documents a new reason for the witch hysteria, the desire for wealth. The author of this article, George Lincoln Burr, was a US historian, diplomat, author, and educator. He is best known as a professor of history and a librarian at Cornell University. This source provides a description of the witch hunts and how many in office promoted the persecution of witches in order to become wealthy. The author then continues to explain, few who were accused of being a witch escaped punishment, and notaries, copyists, innkeepers, witch hunters, and executioners became rich from the witch trials. Yet, many doubted that all of the witches were truly guilty. After many more years of persecution, 
Rules were made restricting the fees and costs of examinations and examiners, and soon the persecutions died out. Through these many discussions that Burr has in his article, we can make many assumptions about the witch trials, such as, the largest factor propagating the witch trials was the desire of those in office to become wealthier, and because of this, many people, such as witch hunters, inquisitors, notaries, jurors, judges, constanobles, copyists, innkeepers, executioners, and nobles, all promoted the persecution of witches, until rules were made to enforce restrictions on the fees and costs of examinations and examiners. As an official publication by an author educated extensively on this subject, this source is reliable. This source also contradicts the previous source, an accusation of witchcraft, on whether the witch hysteria was created and propagated by ignorance and fear, or the desire to become rich. After analysing this source, it is clear how Burr links the witch trials to corruption in office by attempting to prove, with a series of primary sources, that the largest factor propagating the witch trials may have been the desire of those in office to become wealthier. So, together, we have analysed two conflicting sources on the major causes of the witch hysteria during the 15th to the 17th century. And we have looked at possible reasons why so many witches were persecuted, and the many factors, such as ignorance, fear, and greed, that continued the witch hysteria for three centuries. Although the witch trials may have seemed like a small part of history, they contributed to many major changes in society and the legal system that are still incredibly relevant today, such as the rights to legal representation, cross-examination of accusers, and the presumption of innocence. Today, the witch trials are also seen as a cautionary tale to remind people of the dangers of paranoia, fear-mongering, and the abuse of authority. Thanks for listening.